Hey, what up America? This is your boy, Bushan Glover, Better Black America TV on YouTube. Now, today is October 9th, 2019. Now, the world that we live in is being compromised right now from a political perspective. So, you know, I got some meetings today. I got, you know, a few minutes before it starts. So I just wanted to um, share with you, uh, with, with the viewers and talk to you about, you know, the, the legislative, the executive and the judicial branches of government, because I, I hear a lot, you know, the Nancy Pelosi's of the world and all the congressmen on the Democratic side say, you know, the um, co-equal branches of government and political science is a science, you know, so therefore, you know, it, it could be debated, it could be debunked, you know, uh, things, new information could come out, things could be changed. But when they say the co-equal branches of government, that's really not true. And that's coming from a political scientist perspective, not, you know, from a partisan perspective, meaning a Republican or a Democrat, but coming from, you know, a, a partisan perspective, meaning a nonpartisan independent. That's pretty much in the middle. Now, when they say co-equal branches of government, when you have the legislative, you got the House. OK, you got the Congress and you got the Senate. OK, and then the Supreme Court is the, you know, which interprets the laws. But the presidency, that's the executive branch. Now, think about it. Now, if you went to a high rise building and you said, OK, I'm going to the executive offices, typically you go to the top because that's where the president, the vice president and the president's cabinets. Now, when you go to the lawmakers, the lawmakers pretty much work for the executive office. Now, understand, you know, we have checks and balances. I understand that. But somehow the 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 our way has been warped based on the hatred of our elected president. Now, President Trump, you know, he's under scrutiny. You know, they're talking about impeachment and, you know, they're subpoenaing, you know, people and he's blocking these subpoenas and he has the right to do that. And that's what I mean by that is that, that there is no co-equal branches of government, because if there was co-equal branches of government, he would have not he will not have the power to block any of the subpoenas. OK, because the president of the United States have veto power and executive order, meaning he can executive making a decision, put it into office and make it and, and run with it. Or he could veto any bill that he selects or he chooses based on, you know, the 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 country's climate. And when I look at the climate of the country that we are living in right now, it, it, it's 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 really becoming a laughing stock nationally. Because Trump is must see TV. If you look at all the news outlets, that's all they're talking about. And then when you look at who's running these news outlets are pretty much his has been against him for a very long time. And a lot of them are, are Jewish Americans, you know, our Jewish community, meaning the CNNs of the world, the the Jerry Nadler, who's a Jewish American, who's who's the you know appropriations committee, who's trying to run the impeachment, you know, Adam Schiff, and the president called him Shifty Schiff, and he's a Jewish American. So when 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 the president says let's put America first, we look at the Jewish community, the Jews, uh, they don't even consider themselves white. They consider themselves Semites and they protect their brand. And it looks like that it bled over to the Democratic Party because harp like Ivy League scholars and look this up. Ivy League scholars have deemed the Democratic Party as being anti-American. And I was fortunate to be in a think tank and I got the approval to basically share just a little bit. But one of the uh, Ivy League professors basically said that the Democratic Party is anti-American. Number one, number one is that America is a republic. We practice democracy, but to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. It's a God-fearing republic. And it's the Democratic Party that wanted the Pledge of Allegiance out of schools because they didn't want people to continue to pledge to a republic. Now, the word democracy is not even written in the Constitution. OK, and if you look it up, America is a constitutional republic. And I believe it was Thomas Jefferson who said if we can keep it because he knew that the Democratic Party was going to try to debunk or denounce or eradicate the Republican Party because they lost the Civil War. Now, the Democrats separated from the union. It used to be a Democratic Republic. But since the Republican Abraham Lincoln, in support of the abolitionist movement led by Frederick Douglass, 
abolished slavery and deemed it, you know, inhumane based on the Constitution, the Democratic Party separated from the Union becoming a democratic state. And they call it the deep state now, but it became democratic. And since it's democratic, it's no longer republic because a true democratic state does not have checks and balances. OK, you basically have the people vote for the laws to change, not the House, not the Senate. Now, republic stands for supreme power. OK, an elephant. OK, which is I thought I didn't know the elephant was a king of the jungle until I was watching National Geographic back in the day. And the elephants ran through the lines then. And those lions was flipping over trees, just getting out the way. And I'm like, Mom, I thought the elephant was the king of the jungle. I said, well, looks like the lion is, because if that ch tusk or he gets trounced, that elephant is a juggernaut. And Lyndon B. Johnson said to himself, America is an elephant. And then if you look at the Republican Party's um, if you look at their mascot, the GOP, it's an elephant. OK, now I'm a non-political party preference independent. OK, I'm not promoting Republican. I'm not um, supporting being a Democrat. I'm basically pushing an agenda to be independent so we could be the judge in this political courtroom, because these two these two sides are basically out of civil war. In the last civil war, you know, blacks, the, you know, the former slaves was uh, promised 40 acres in a mule. But look at the climate of today. We don't have a voice in either party. But. By America being a republic, a God fearing republic, and you can to the republic for what you stand, one nation under God, and you can see the God, you know, on your money. And the GOP being the elephant, what's the the mascot for the uh, Democratic Party? A jackass, a donkey. Isn't that a sign? What's the worth of a jackass? And how did how did that become their? You know, who allowed that? Why why, why they didn't try to change that? Because they want to put it in your face. It's a jackass. It's a donkey. But the Democratic Party is pretty much going rogue. You know, the Democratic Party has lost its way, you know, and, and to um, because they don't like the president, the elected president who won the Electoral College. And the Electoral College is very important because we can't have a popularity contest, because if you had a popularity contest, then Jay-Z and Beyonce could be president and vice president. So when you talk about checks and balances, you have to win in Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota. You got to turn those purple states into blue states. You got to turn, you know, it's a lot of politicking going on because it has to reach the fabric of America, not the big cities like New York and L.A. Because based on New York and L.A., based on, uh, on the uh, population, you know, they can actually, you know, win the election. All they have to do is politic um, New York. The state and California. They wouldn't be in Iowa where most of the, the pres presidential candidates are spending their time because that's where it all starts. You want to you want to get those electoral college votes in Iowa and you want to win that Iowa caucus down there. So but we're going to talk about it. OK, we're going to talk about it. You know, uh, God has intervened and it's time to really talk about things that we never did want to talk about. That's post-traumatic slave disorder, crab bucket syndrome. We need to talk about, you know, what direction are we going from a political perspective? And then I saw a post on you on Facebook. If President Trump promised or President Trump, you know, put in that he would sign a bill that will not only support reparations, but cut checks, would you vote for them? So we're gonna talk about it. But the Harvard scholars have deemed the Democratic Party as anti-American, anti-American. They don't want your son to be your son. They don't want your daughter to be your daughter. They want your son and daughter to be it until it decides what it wants to be. No, if you got a penis, it's a boy. If you got a vagina, it's a girl. But at the end of the day, the most conservative human beings on this planet is black men. And I was in the barbershop uh, this weekend and it was crowded and packed and full and I asked, you know, uh, we were having our discussions and I asked, you know, how many of you in here, you know, got your sons with you, how heterosexuals, okay, how many men in here, straight men, everybody said they were straight, okay, but how many men in here, outside of your family members, has a gay male friend? Everybody fell out laughing, because come on, man. Ain't no heterosexual man gonna be sitting back talking, you know, 
Hey, 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 Bashan, we're going to be partying. You want to come hang out with me and my boys? Like, hell no, nigga. <laughs> we, we don't get out like that. You know what I'm saying? Family's different. But when it comes to friends, you know, we're, we're alphas. You know, we're, we're, the, we're, the, you know, we're men. We want to preserve who we are. We, we have to reproduce because we know, you know, if you could convince the black man to not reproduce, that's a part of the genocidal movement. And we want to talk about that moving forward. So I just wanted to give you a teaser. You know, and talk about, you know, the, the climate that we're going to be moving in because we this is a better black America movement is a pretty much a humanity movement because we got ideas and, 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 and things on the place on the, you know, in play that are more exciting, you know, more engageable and and makes more sense than any presidential candidate so stay tuned St you know keep you know keep tuning in i gotta keep this content going that's why i did the video today didn't have any time but i'm gonna just go ahead and say this man it's an old what, what's the term that they call it proverb old african proverb it's two elephants it's two juggernaut elephants two alpha male elephants is on the plains of africa and they're you know they got a fight to see who's going to reproduce and they fight and they fight and those two juggernauts kill themselves. You know, the only thing that suffers, and I'm referring to the two party system as a metaphor the, as those two elephants. When those two elephants kill themselves, the only thing that suffers is the grass. And with that being said, man, have a blessed day, a better black America. Keep tuning in, hit that like, hit that notification because we about to come hard. You know, because God's people shall not perish due to the lack of knowledge. With that being said, have a great day.